I suggest that. I wonder if there are any ways to get rid of these complicities if we start getting, if I start getting some more complicities in the council. So I wonder if you could do that. One thing you could do is, uh, again, depending on how things are scheduled at your parish, you can say, hey, instead of scheduling three servers at Mass, could you schedule me as your acolyte? So again, you would carry the cross in and the altar. Creating mass might want to act alike. If you're able to create a mass. Or, you know, if you're going to act alike at a funeral service. <laughs> that could be really helpful. So you don't want to just kind of The other thing that Acolyte does is exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. So for exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, you will need a corporal. Excuse me, Pastor. And the corporal is placed on the altar prior to the service. Um, we have seen it done. When you bring over an empty monstrance, you always sideways, okay? not facing out. Okay? Um, in a monstrance, there's a little, first of all, make sure you know how your monstrance opens. <laughs> okay? Because they all open differently. Usually there's a little latch or, or snap or something. So sure you know. And then usually there's a little track right inside. Okay. For exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, uh, the host used should be one recently consecrated. So if you're doing exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, talk to your pastor saying, when can you consecrate a host for exposition? And what what else would the reason? Could it be the, like, if this is a Friday, could it be the Last Supper? Ideally, it's the last mass. Ideally, it's the last mass. Okay. Um, then, when you're at the light, four candles for exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. Is that right? And then those four candles. Um, when you bring the host from the tabernacle, Sometimes there is a, a, a case where the lunette fits in. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have a case where the lunette f fits in, that's a good time to maybe use another corporal. So you're covering the blessed sacrament, always covered the blessed sacrament. Okay. So um, when you go to the tabernacle, normally. Open the tabernacle door at your inflection. Take the, the lunette out, no, in a case itself, in a corporal. Oh, 
both knees. Both knees, yeah. And then um, the incense that blessed the sacrament. When you're incensing the blessed sacrament, it's three swings of three. When you're incensing anything else, it's two swings of three. Okay. So normally you've got the incense. Your hand holding the end goes over your heart or over your chest, raising it, and you swing with your wrist. One. liturgical event that involves a community's prayers. Theoretical. What if, let's just say, there was a, a tradition of every other kind of, this is the first kind of blessed sacrament, of a meditative prayer? Then you have to say, you know, Father, in my conscience, I just can't do that. Mm -hmm. or what? what are you talking about? What's the question? So, let's just theoretically, the of the Blessed Sacrament is a communal liturgical event. That the end. expectation would be to stay the entire time. There's two types of expositions. Exposition for a brief time and exposition for a longer time. What is the difference in uh, perpetual adoration? What is it? Perpetual adoration requires the permission of a bishop and is normally done in religious houses. Have a special devotion to the Eucharist. You mean the place where we're doing 24 hour adoration first? Like doing it right? If they have permission from the bishop, first of all. But it's, it is unusual. It's normally done, like in religious communities, like cloistered sisters. That's the purpose of perpetual adoration. Father, could you talk a little bit about the order of, like you said, song, reading, and reflection? What's the order of that in terms of the whole process? <coughs> I don't believe the ritual spells it out. So you can be creative in that. Okay. Then, um, when exposition draws to a close, you cannot do benediction. Only a deacon or a priest can do benediction. So basically, you simply repose the blessed sacrament. No acolyte available, then a designated Eucharistic minister could do it. So again, to repose the blessed sacrament. Again, okay, usually it's done in silence. Now, if you're carrying the blessed sacrament, 